Yo, what's up guys? Mike here, owner of Mac Financial Group. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are starting our QuickBooks Basics videos. They're just gonna pop up randomly. We're not gonna do a series with them, but if you see QuickBooks Basics, that means that these are just some of the main functionalities in QuickBooks that you're going to need to know to really use the system properly. Uh, in our first video on here, we're gonna go over the banking section. Uh, some really cool features that QuickBooks offers, linking your bank account, taking snapshots of receipts, things like that. You'll see it in the video, uh, but it was one of the main reasons why I started with and stuck with working with QuickBooks. Um, it makes the makes my life easier as a bookkeeper. It makes my client's life a lot easier on their end. We don't need to continuously uh, reach out and give each other information um, th there's just a lot of ways that that information is already coming to me and I'm able to do my job. So it makes it really nice. So, um, before we get into the video, if you guys could please subscribe, uh, it really helps us out. If you hit the alerts button, you can get an alert every time we upload a video right now. That's every Sunday, uh, and share this out with anybody else that you think, uh, will benefit from this information. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's dive into the screen and let's see how it works. All right, guys, so for this video, we're going to focus on the banking section over here in the left navigation bar, and we're going to start off in banking. So what this gives you the ability to do is directly integrate your bank account with QuickBooks Online, and you do that by going up to the top right here and choose link account. Now, you would search for your bank right in this section, and I, from, what, from my experience, I have never been able not to link a bank account that my, me or my clients have had it really does cover all of the major banks and credit card companies they're even starting to bring in like venmo and things like that so it's being updated every day they're adding more every day um, if you have a small local credit union or small local branch that you don't find here there are ways to import your transactions um, in bulk uh, we and we're gonna go over that in a later video but let's assume your bank or credit card company is on here uh, you would select your bank if you don't see it in these this bottom tiles you can search for it right here select your bank and type in your online banking login credentials once that is verified you're gonna see the list of all the accounts that are normally linked with that login so say you have five accounts that you're able to view when you log into your bank account online you can select one or all five depending on if they're related to this business so let's say only one of them is related you can select just that one and then once it's selected and verified it's going to show up just like this so each block here is actually representing a different account so this is a checking savings and credit card and let's focus on the checking account to show you how it works so anytime you swipe your card or money goes into your account or anything any money in or out of your account will pop up down here as a separate transaction money received will show up in this column money spent will show up in this column the date that it hit your bank will be here and then your bank descriptions right here there's also payee where you can put in a vendor based on your quickbooks vendors you can select that here and the category for the gl account that you are categorizing that expense or income to. So there's three options when you have a transaction that you want to add to your books. You either categorize, you find a match, or you record a transfer. So the first is categorize where you can put all the information in manually. Um, you can select your payee, you can put your account and a memo right in here. So let's say Let's what we want to do this uh, transaction. We want to categorize it. The payee is add rental, a rental. The category is equipment rental. That works for me. It is a we're, we're we're renting equipment for this, and we can choose a project or customer if it pertains to that project or customer. If it's billable, you need to bill that customer later. You can choose that and put a little memo and see what it was. Maybe we rented a. Uh, Maybe we ran it a lawnmower, whatever it might be. Uh, you can add an attachment if you have any supporting documentation that you want to go towards this. 
And once that's all good and you have everything filled out that you need, this is actually the only one that's mandatory that won't let you go without choosing it. But the other stuff really is important information to have so you can go back and always view what you're doing. So I do recommend filling out all the other sections as well and any attachment if you have a receipt or anything like that that goes with this transaction. All right, so we're going to add that. So now... As you can see, this was green after we did that, and it actually, since these had the same description, it's going to assume that it's going to the same category here. So it already kind of does that for you, and it, it tries to learn as you go to do it, and we'll get into the rules in a little bit. Um, once you've categorized the transaction, you're going to see it in this categorized section here, and you can always undo it and go back and change it, but all of, all of the detail... Of everything that you do in this for review section once it's done it will show up in here so you can see what you did all right so let's say that for this one it found a match right so you already have an expense recorded in QuickBooks maybe you just put it in uh, earlier and now this is actually the money coming out of your account so instead of double booking it you can just hit match and th what this is going to do is take it out of your accounts payable account and show it out show that you actually spent the money out of your cash account and you can just hit find match now double check the expense and make sure that it's the matching the correct expense um, if it's not you can always go into find other matches and have it check have it and select the one that it's supposed to go to maybe you have multiple transactions with 10809 and it's not choosing the right one that's where you can go into find other matches and choose it um, but always double check this the system is not perfect it does a very good job but it is not perfect so double check before you hit match but if it is correct and i believe it is this expense is definitely for tanya's nursery i'm going to hit match and move forward now the last thing you can do is record a transfer and really this makes sense when you're moving one money one amount of money from one account to the other so for example i'm paying off my credit card from my checking account normally what would happen is let's go to one where it's spent so we spent maybe this isn't a rental we're just going to use it as an example we're going to record a transfer from this checking account since we're on here and we say it's transferring to mastercard we would hit record transfer and then on this other side we should see the same amount in received for 1200 that we would match that transaction to and again, every time we add those things in here, it's going to continue this list of categorized and you can undo or see where we put that money received or money spent. You can also exclude transactions. Um, I don't recommend just doing that because you maybe if, if you see a duplicate, it could very well be a duplicate that isn't on your bank account. Again, it's not perfect. It does happen. But I would go back and check your statement to make sure that that transaction is not on your bank statement before you exclude any transaction. That is the only time anything should be excluded because it will throw off your reconciliation. If not, it doesn't mean excluded to say just because you don't want to record that expense to your business or maybe it was a personal expense, you need to put that to an equity account. It's that you don't just exclude that and because you're then your reconciliation for your cash is not going to be correct. So work with your accountant. There's always that ask my accountant. Um, there's an you there's an ask my accountant um, chart of accounts account that you can always put that to. So do that and ask them first before you just exclude things because your cash will be out of whack if you don't. All right, I think that's a most of the overview with the checking, but let's go into it a little further and try and figure out how we can kind of reduce the manual entry as much as possible. So let's, for example, say that this equipment rental, we always rent equipment from a rental, right? Maybe the amount's different, but we always rent th this from a rental. We always rent equipment from a rental and it's always going to be booked to equipment rental. So we're going to create a rule right here and say equipment rental rule. We're going to name it. 
And right here it's saying if the description contains a rental or money out of all bank accounts that we're going to assign it to an expense account equipment category and that payee is going to be a rental. So you can change these things if there's more conditions that you want to make sure or whatever. And you can actually have it automatically add. I don't recommend you clicking auto add. I would say set all this stuff up for the rules and just like you're seeing this one record found for match, it's going to say rule applied and you can then just give it a quick glance and make sure that it's right before you hit add. I really, really recommend doing that. It Again, the system's not perfect. I would, and I think just taking that quick second to make sure it all looks right and clicking add on all of them can is a lot Yes, it's still a little bit time consuming, but you'll save a lot more time if something's not right later. You have to go back and fix it. So we're going to create this rule. I like this. I think this makes sense. Equipment rule. We're going to hit save. We're not going to auto add it. And see how this rule comes up here, specifying that it's, it did match the criteria for your rule. And this is how you'll see all these transactions come in now, regardless of the amount. Now, if we wanted to, um, we're going to go into the rules section and we'll see that rule here. Now, if we wanted to edit, right, you can do this by bank tax or amount. So say that amount always is going to be 1200. You can do it that way so that the rule isn't applied unless you're spending that amount of money. And then if it doesn't hit 1200, it's not going to apply that rule. So you have some flexibility here. You have some conditions. You can add that as a, an additional condition too. If it's a rental and it's one twelve hundred, maybe that's what it is. Um, again, be careful with this. But at the same time, it, if you learn how it works and learn what it does, it can save you a lot of time. Okay, so now we went over banking, we went over rules, and I want to just go over the receipts module now too because this is a new, a pretty new feature they came out with in the last year, and it is incredible. So um, you, if you have your receipts, you can either, if you have them on your computer, you can drag and drop them right here, or if you have the QuickBooks Online app on your phone, I tried to record the screen on my phone and have this little box on the right but quickbooks has a privacy thing on their app and it just was black the whole time so i wasn't able to show you guys but if you're in if you have the quickbooks app on your phone you log into your company there's a receipt snap section on the mobile phone and you can just take a picture of the receipt and that's the only function on the app but once it's done you're actually able to see that transaction come up here. So give me one second. I'm going to switch over to another company. I added a fake receipt into a test company that I have just so I can show you how this works. So give me one second and I'll be right back. We're in a new company uh, just to show you how this works. But all I had to do was take a picture of my receipt using the QuickBooks Online app. And again, that's the only functionality you can do in the mobile app. There's a receipt snap, you take a picture and it's done. But once you get back on your computer, it'll be waiting for you just like this. And the coolest part is it uses this OCR technology to automatically populate the date, the description, and the amount directly from the receipt. And we'll dive in, I'll show you. I didn't fill out any of this stuff yet. I didn't do anything yet. It already found that May 29th, 2020, it filled that out for me. The description from Green Tree Golf Course right here, boom, it was already there. And the amount of $3 was correct. So it already knew all of that. I didn't have to do anything. All I'll have to do now is fill out that it was going to the credit card account. So I pay with credit card. All right, cool. So we're going to fill out credit card. And food sales. So maybe it was food sales or maybe it was meals and entertainment. Um Meals and entertainment. Oh, we'll just put food sales for right now. You select the account it goes to. Any other additional information, customer if it's necessary, uh, memo. Uh, again, I really do recommend filling all these out for the video. 
I'm just doing fake scenarios. I don't really have anything, but on, on your real stuff, you want to be as detailed as possible. It's going to help you in the long run. So then you just hit save and next and create the expense and it's going to book saying that the cash, the, the amount came out of your credit card and it, uh, by using your credit card to pay for it and it hit food sales on your, uh, income statement. So right there, it's really great. Once it's already done, it's going to go pop in here in your reviewed section, just like you saw on the banking side too. So really great so yeah that was the receipt section um i mean again this was one of the biggest upgrades i think these guys have had um it's made everything so much easier we were using a third party app before that we're no longer using because they added this functionality in. i had a couple clients with a lot of receipts and this just makes it so much easier they can snap a picture we have the attachment right directly there for auditing purposes they don't have to keep a book of receipts everywhere anymore um so and now we don't have to pay a third party app and pay more money to have this same functionality it's all included in the cost with quickbooks um so we were really excited about this feature so um and that's really it that's the banking section um th those it, it's really powerful i recommend you learn exactly how it works i hope this helped you i hope this helped maybe even troubleshoot some of the issues you might have been having with the banking section there are some nuances with it that we went over um so if you like this and you're going to start uh implementing this into your company please hit the like button down below it really helps us out and i will see you guys next week all right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I know those QuickBooks tutorials are super, super exciting. And <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I get it. They're boring, um, but they're meant to, they're not meant to be fun. They're just meant to save you time so you can go and do the fun stuff that you want to do. Um, so stick with them, implement them. I promise you it'll save you a lot of time and headache and you can go actually enjoy the things that you want to do. Um, but I promised you guys a surprise at the end and here it is. So I've been talking to a lot of small business owners, uh, a lot of my clients, some people that aren't my clients. And I was just wondering how everybody is planning for retirement. I mean, these are small businesses. They don't have 401ks coming from a large corporation. Um, I Some people had financial advisors, things like that. But a lot of people I talk to either don't really have a plan um, for retirement or they plan on selling the business, hopefully, or it's there's just nothing there I'm really seeing. Um, so I'm going to have a lot more information on this I, and I want to start to come up with an actual um, suggestions for people. However, there's no better time to start than right now. So what we're going to do today is if you go into the links below, you can get three free stocks. Two of them come from Weeble. Um, so if you see the Weeble sec link, click on that. You can get a free stock just for signing up. And then you get a free stock for depositing $100 into the account. And you don't even have to use that 100 bucks if you don't want to. Uh, after that, you can just pull the $100 out and you have two free stocks. Um, I advise you keep it in there and start investing. That's the whole point of this. But it, it at least gives you a start with a portfolio. People that don't know the stock market, you're getting in for free. Um, and then there's also a link down below for Robinhood. Um, and if you sign up for that, you get a free stock. So you can start your portfolio out with no risk, free, three stocks, and then we can have a discussion or you can go to your financial advisors and figure out how to start to build up that portfolio. That makes sense. Um, but I just wanted to offer th that to you guys. Like I said, we're going to bring out some more stuff on retirement planning and end game. And what are you, what are we doing this for? Right. We put them in a lot of time. We put in a lot of hours. How are we going to get the goal that we want, which is financial freedom, which is time with your family, which is um, maybe that big house in Malibu. I don't know what you want. I don't know what your goals are, but I want to I want to help you get to them. So hope that helps. Sign up. It's free, guys. Just sign up. Do what you need to do. Thanks. And I uh, hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Sunday.